Hey friends, welcome to the third day of our devotions together. We're continuing in the Gospel of John. Today we're looking at chapters 4 and 5. So if you have not had a chance to read those chapters yet, I encourage you to go read them. Uh, then come back with us. So push that pause button if you need to. Alright, if you're ready, let's dive in. I want us to, to look at a second conversation. We looked at a conversation Jesus had with Nicodemus yesterday. Well, today we're going to look at a conversation he has with a Samaritan woman. Now, let's talk about these two different conversations. When he talked to Nicodemus, Jesus was talking to a religious leader, a distinguished teacher, somebody that had a good reputation. Well, today we're on the other side of the sp social spectrum, if you will. A Samaritan woman was uh, despised by many. She was an outcast, if you will, probably uneducated. Probably drawing this water around noontime to avoid contact with other people. So she was kind of on the outskirts of society, if you will. But that doesn't stop Jesus from having an incredible conversation with her. So look in your Bible to chapter 4. Start with verse 7, if you will. It says there, When this Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. See, Jews and Samaritans didn't really get along. Jews thought of Samaritans kind of half-breeds, of, of not full ancestral. And so they didn't really interact much. How can you ask me for a drink? This woman goes on to ask. Then verse 10, Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Let's talk about water for just a brief moment. I got a bottle of water here. And I ask a question to you. Have you ever seen a bottle of salt water it's for sale? Salt water. Have you? I'm guessing you haven't. You know why you haven't seen salt water for sale in a bottle? Because when you drink too much salt, your kidney is forced to push it out. You urinate it out. Your kidney can only handle so much salt in it, and it has to push it out. So you can never survive on a desert island by drinking the ocean because your body will keep forcing out your, all the liquids in your body until you become dehydrated and you drown. See, that's the thing about salt water. It's not good for quenching thirst. So that's why we have bottled water, bottled fresh water. See, this is kind of true as we talk about the living water of Jesus. See, this world is kind of like salt water sometimes. You can drink in all you want, but guess what? It's not going to quench your thirst. In fact, it's going to dehydrate you and eventually kill you. And that's what Jesus is talking about here. He says, what I offer is salvation, is forgiveness, is mercy. And this is living water. Water that gives you abundant life here and eternal life for all time. See, this Samaritan woman had a hard time understanding this fully. But as Jesus continued in conversation, we find out that he knows everything about this woman just as he knows everything about us. He talks about her five husbands that she had and the man she's living with now. In fact, she's so amazed by what he knows, she goes to the town and tells the town folk and they all rush out. And before long, this woman's testimony of, of knowing Jesus and knowing that Jesus knows everything about her turns into the whole people becoming saved. See, that's what's incredible and important, that we all have a testimony, a testimony of knowing that Jesus knows us, whether we're religious like Nicodemus or lives are filled with sin like the Samaritan woman. The Bible is clear. All have fallen short of the glory of God. So we all need that living water. And no matter what we try to do to fulfill our thirst in this world, it will never be enough. But Jesus, he offers us that living water that wells up into eternal life, as scripture tells us. Oh, 
Well, praise be to God. So I ask you again, do you have that living water? Have you taken a gulp or a sip of that living water who is Jesus Christ? If you haven't, the time's now. If you have, are you sharing that living water with others? Let's pray. God, we thank you so much for offering to be our living water. Help us now in a time where there's so much confusion and anxiety and worry. Know that this world can't give us anything to quench that thirst that we have, that thirst for love and forgiveness and purpose, that God, only you can quench that thirst. So God, we turn to you, the author and perfecter of our faith. We rest in you. We put our strength in you. And we ask that you just fill our bodies with your presence, fill our lives with your presence, and lead us and guide us. Thank you for quenching that thirst that only you can quench. Help those who've never accepted you, Lord. We pray that right now they make that decision. They reach out to us here at Mount Zion. And we can tell more about that living water. And God, for us that have experienced it, help us to share it. Help us to, to spread the gospel. Help us in this time of need show others that there is something that can quench that need, that thirst. And his name is Jesus Christ. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you. In your holy name we pray. Amen.